Right, my name is Ruth Minnie. I'm 22 years old and I'm here with my grandmother. Martina Herrera. Alright, so I'm just going to ask you a few questions. Can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and what it was like growing up? I am the second oldest of nine living brothers and sisters. Two that passed away made us 11. I'm the second oldest, the oldest female. Therefore, I was like the surrogate mother, my mom's primary helper, feeding all the nine kids plus my father and helping with the housework and the washing and everything else. I was also the second oldest to get married at 15 and starting a family by 16. Can you tell me about a teacher or an adult that had a big impact on your life while you were growing up? I guess the one that had the best impact or the biggest impact was my mother. It was amazing to see this beautiful woman with nine kids, a not too happy marriage. My father was an abusive father, not just to the kids, but to my mother. And she was able to survive all that and always had a very upbeat attitude and smart, so smart uh, for fifth grade education because that's all she was allowed to go to. She was exceedingly bright. She taught herself many things besides reading and math and logic and survival. I think that was the biggest thing in her life, survival, because regardless of everything that she went through, she survived it with a smile on her face and a positive attitude, never feeling sorry for herself, but just moving on and keeping us moving along to do better for ourselves. Has your life been different than how you imagined it would be when you were young? Yes, exceedingly so. Like I said, my mother had a very miserable life. We were poor, very poor. And being the oldest, I had to help a lot. And with so many kids and sometimes very little income. And then my father leaving us at certain times to where mama had to just make do with whatever she could. And of course, her family helped us out a lot too. But it was a rough time being the oldest, making do with what little we had. But mama did it mama made made our lives work uh she took ironing she would iron people's clothes to make money she was not too embarrassed to take help from the state at that time when they provided just flour and cornmeal and beans just to get us through she worked several jobs at a time worked days and nights and me being the oldest i had to take care of the kids and half the time uh feed them after school walk with them to school pick them up from school as the oldest i had to take care the surrogate mother role to take care of my brothers and sisters at a very young age. I wasn't even in middle school and just picking up the little ones from elementary along with me. And then when I went into middle school, still taking them to school and picking them up on my way back and taking them home and taking them home to eat. I had Mama would leave something made because at that time she started working nights. So I had to take care of the kids and feed them and get them to bed and get clothes ready for the next day. Out of the people you've lost in your life, who do you miss the most and what is it about them that you miss? That's an easy one. My mom. My mama was everything. She was my mother, my confidant, my rock. And she was always positive, always so positive about everything. My mama never met a stranger. She never met anyone that she didn't make friends with. Even when she passed away, the doctors that treated her sent letters from out of state about what such an amazing person she was and people that we never knew about. So many flowers, so many people. Her procession was long, over a mile long. People that knew her, that loved her, that she had uh, touched their lives. And anything that I am or that I have been able to accomplish, it has been through my mom pushing never give up don't let anybody put you down don't let anybody push you around and you do for you and your kids and what you need to do don't let anybody bring you down keep your head high and do what you gotta do for you is there anything that you want to tell me your granddaughter that you've never told anyone before i've always been pretty much an open book i adored my mother i could not stand my father because he was mean and abusive we had a tough life but mama kept us together and I hope that I can be just half the woman that my mother was. I've tried, I've tried, but I don't think I will ever measure up with what my mom did and my mom accomplished. What are your hopes and wishes for me or your children? For my kids, I just wanted better, everything better for them. Not, not just money, but good partners, good mates, good friends, a good life. I had a very limited 
life growing up. I didn't get to finish high school until after I was married and got my college uh, after I was married. But I wanted my kids to make sure that they graduated and had a better life for themselves and for their kids. And for my grandchildren, every step, as we go back in, in our family, in our lives, there's always been a couple of steps more and a couple of steps more that the next generation moves. Uh, Mama was now able to finish elementary school and she wanted schooling so bad. She was so smart. She educated herself, but she wanted more for us. I got to go to all the way up to middle school and then I dropped out because I got married at a very young age. But later on in life, I went back at a friend's urging She, who told me, you have to have more faith in yourself. You're smart. And because she wanted me to get my GED. And I said, it takes long to go to all those classes and I've got kids at home and I've got responsibilities. He says, you don't have to go to school. Just go take the test, see how far you are. Man, was I surprised when I went there and I whipped that test and got my GED. I did not have to take any courses, any classes, nothing. And that encouraged me that maybe I was a little bit smart. But so from there on, I started taking classes at night, college classes. Uh, I never did get to get a degree. Life got in the way. A lot of different things. Kids going on strike from where I was working. A lot of things, but I didn't get to do college, but I did get some college. I got the taste of it. I got to know what it would be like to be in college, but as you wait, it gets harder because you have kids, you have responsibilities. It just makes it too hard. And then you have to decide what is more important, your children, your home, or an education is going to take you away and who knows how that would affect your kids. For me, it was a no-brainer. My mama always said, kids come first no matter what. So it was a no-brainer. I did what I could and I had a full-time job. I had kids in school. I had to make sure that they did what they had to do and be a part of their lives in school. So that left me no time for pursuing more college. I did get some. I got the taste of it. And it was sweet. So sweet. I encourage anybody, go to school, go to college. It's Every day it's something different, something new, different people. I loved every minute of it. And I was sad to have to leave. But when you decide to take on other responsibilities, you got to go to that main responsibility. And that was my kids and my home, my husband. If you knew this would be our last conversation, is there anything you'd like to share? Yes. You're smart. You're my granddaughter. So we share a little bit of our brains. And hopefully you picked up a little bit from me and you've learned a lot from your mom. Never let anybody tell you you can't do anything because you're a woman. Never let anyone put you down for any reason. You're amazing. Do what you want to do, accomplish what you can, and always be proud of what you've done. Whether you accomplish what you think you might have wanted to accomplish, be proud of what you've done. I wanted to do so much. I had kids, little kids, and responsibilities. We had a house, a mortgage, and a car, and all this other stuff. It becomes a choice. So right now that you can, do all you can with yourself, for yourself, to yourself, and only for yourself. Because right now you don't have to share it with nobody. As you get older, it becomes less about you. And sometimes you can lose yourself. But you have to do it for you. For the betterment of everybody in your family that you will have. But do it now while it's just you. And you can concentrate just on you. And that will get you far. Thinking about uh, your family many generations from now and knowing that they may hear this recording, is there anything you would like to say to them? Any wisdom or advice you'd like to give them? Always keep track of every single person in this family. There's good, there's bad, there's silly, there's serious, there's proud, some maybe not so proud, but it's our family. Our ancestors came here for a better life. They created who we are. We have to keep that going. Don't let the story go. Keep our story going. Keep our faith alive, our hope alive, and pass it on to our kids. Be proud. Be proud of who you are, where you came from, and accomplish. Accomplish at least one-fourth of what our, our ancestors accomplished. They came across the ocean and settled here. And look at us. We're here for what they've done, for what they accomplished. So whatever you do in life is going to affect other people. Your family, your ancestors gave us a lot. You need to give back. Don't forget, you need to give back a little bit of what you got from our ancestors. Don't let that die. Don't let what they wanted for us. New hope, new future, a better life. That's why they came here. We need to keep that going for our kids for the future.